I got my pants and my topper on backwards. Fingers crossed. Did not end up racing the half marathon. Don't want to do this. Three hours of sleep. The only annoying thing is that I'm essentially starting from scratch. Uh, I'm a bit sick. It's unnecessary. I'm fully aware. Such a big difference in the pacing. Good evening, good evening. Welcome back to my channel. I swear the day before you have a race, it always feels like a big day when it really shouldn't be, ideally. We are on the Gold Coast again. We're staying at the Langham, which is where we stayed last year, but we're here for three nights, which is really nice because last year we were only for one night. So when the race was kind of done, you know, we went back home. Whereas now we get to kind of like relax and just like hang out here and stuff. And it's a lot different because as I've mentioned before, last time I was trying my hardest to get Taylor Swift tickets and I didn't get them and I was devastated. So this time it's nice to be able to kind of enjoy the experience a little bit more and not be so hung up about bloody Taylor Swift tickets. My boyfriend's just gone to the gym. We pretty much today I packed everything. I swear I've packed so much stuff and I feel very very tired. I think if it's because I'm nervous or my boyfriend was like it might be because you're digesting carbs and I also bought, I don't know, it's called like Traveland. I didn't want to get full on Imodium because I just don't don't want to like f up my gut heaps. I don't know. We'll try that, you know, see how it goes. The fact that I'll probably be nervous <laughs> will help me, but I'm definitely keen oh, for an early night because I'll probably get up around 3 a.m. Gives me plenty of time to digest my food and like chill out and stuff. And then I'm pretty sure we are supposed to get to the uh, start line at like 5 a.m. Again, it's nice because I know what to expect. So I'm not worrying about that. I'm a little bit nervous because I do want to do, you know, well. I think there's a part of me that's like subconsciously putting a lot of pressure on myself to get sub two. This is my dilemma. I don't know what shoes I want to run in. I've got the Asics Super Blast, which we know these, we love these. I technically wore those last year. And then I've also got my carbon plate shoes, which are the New Balance. What are these called? SE Elite something super comp. They have a carbon plate in it. I think I'm like 80, 20, like 80% I'm going to go with these and 20% with these because these are pretty comfy but I think I've just never I don't think I've run anything super far in these which is a little bit risky oh, I really don't know I'll probably just see how I feel tomorrow also I'm not going to take my running vest because they have water stations along the way which is fine I'm going to take a running belt and then I'm going to put my phone in my pants because I got some new LSKD shorts with the phone pocket in the leg and I'm going to put this camera in my running belt and that's gonna be me and then my gels in the other in the other pocket and I think I'm gonna wear like an all black outfit just because that seems to be the coolest for me so I think tomorrow for my pre-run meal slash snack I'm gonna do bread with jam and just pray fingers crossed I'm excited I literally almost forgot to bring my number two <laughs> that would have been terrible I would have had to drive from here back home and go get but luckily I didn't, so I'm not even putting that energy out there. This is the tra the <laughs> Travelin. Reduces the risk of traveler's diarrhea. I'm going to be traveling by running. <laughs> Clinically proven up to 90% protection. Oh my goodness. I'll give you a little tour of the place, even though it's so dirty right now. This is what you see when you walk in. Got some stuff everywhere. I like this place because I picked a room that actually has a kitchen, which is quite nice instead of a, you know, like a typical, just a room for a hotel. We've got a stove top, all the goodies, creatine, greens, coffee, supplements, electrolytes, all the things. And then you've got the living space over here, which is really cute. Nice little mirror. We love a mirror for the fit checks. And then this is the bathroom. I really should do this before I actually like mess up the place. Super nice. The Langham is a really nice hotel. It's just in Surface Paradise. I don't love Surface Paradise. It's quite close to the start lines. <laughs> and then this is the bedroom. Nice big bed. I did bring my pillow, but they didn't bring it in. And I'm, I don't know if I can be bothered to go get it. And I think we'll be all right. And then, yeah, we also have a really nice view of the ocean that you can't see right now. Oh my God, it's raining. Okay, you can kind of see I'm filming in low light and that just like completely brightened everything up. How nice. Unfortunately, the weather's not great. Fingers crossed it stops just for a period of about two hours in the morning and then we'll be fine. Cause I didn't bring any type of wet weather gear. We're so high up, ready? Look down below. Check it 
Charlie is also staying with Elise and Kieran, so she's having a little sleepover. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up now and I'll, I'll chat to you later. It is about quarter to five in the morning. I woke up at three, got up at about quarter past three. But it's time to run a half marathon. I've decided to go with the super glass just because I know that I can trust that these will be okay. Plus it's raining right now. And I don't know, I feel like I might slip over in the other ones. I think this is just the safest option. And yeah, this is what I'm wearing. I've got LSKD bottoms and an LSKD top as well. So I'm definitely feeling like a bit sick. Like I think I'm just obviously not nervous and whatnot. And I just really hope the rain stops because that'll be annoying. I have packed a long sleeve just in case it's like, you know, cold. We're back. Where do I even begin? This might even be a bit dramatic. Definitely feels a little bit dramatic, but I did not end up racing the half marathon. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Everything was completely fine the day before, leading up, you know, eating, drinking, whatever it may be. However, I got the least amount of sleep I have gotten in a very, very, very long time the night before. My ring told me that I got three hours, 50-ish minutes, I think, of sleep. I did end up having a nap when we got back, but anyway, I'll get into that. I actually even think it was less than that because I was trying so hard to go to sleep and I was awake, but, so I was obviously like lying still, but I feel like it was even less than that because I didn't sleep until after 1 a.m. and then I got up at 3 a.m. And my ultra human ring literally said nosedive in terms of how my sleep went that night. It was not good. And I think when I initially woke up, I was kind of running on adrenaline perhaps, or just, you know, like, oh, got to get up. This is, it's like when you're going to the airport, you know, if you're leaving really, really early, you just kind of get up. But then the tiredness really hit me once we kind of arrived at the race. And if you were there, you would know it was absolutely pissing down with rain. It was freezing. It was windy. It was raining. It was pure hell. And I think just that in combination with the no sleep and my mental state, because there were a couple of other things that were going on. I just was not doing well. I just thought, I don't actually know if I can do this. After a lot of back and forth, I decided that for my mental sanity and my honestly physical health, because I don't think running 21k on three hours of sleep was the best idea for me. And since my ultimate goal is I'm training for my marathon, this is, you know, not what I'm training for, even though it's still important to me and I paid for the entry, I paid to go there. It's, I was still devastated, but my ultimate goal is the marathon. I'm definitely sad and upset that I didn't get to do it because I was really looking forward to it. But ultimately, I do think that was the best decision for me at that time. And you know, hindsight, you could have said, oh, I could have pushed a little bit more and, and gotten through it. But I was a wreck. I was so tired. It was freaking freezing and just raining and off. And luckily, I think the rain actually did clear, which was good for everyone who was running. We ended up going back to the hotel, going back to sleep. <laughs> and then I woke up again at 9am. That was the situation. And I felt Felt really guilty because I feel like obviously since I'm documenting my journey on Instagram, YouTube, I owe it to you guys to follow through with what I'm doing and I want to follow through as well. So I felt a bit ashamed that I, you know, that happened, but that's life and not everything is going to go smoothly. I swear the Gold Coast Half Marathon is cursed for me in terms of just things going wrong. But to end on a better note, I did end up doing my long run on the Sunday. I had a 15k run actually scheduled, so which was kind of cool because 
because where we were staying on the Gold Coast, we stayed at the Langham and the marathon actually went right past the hotel. So I was kind of running in the opposite direction to everyone running the marathon side by side, which was really, really cool to see. It's so inspiring every time you see a marathon and the people that enter in and you're like, wow, I, I know what you're going through and props to you. Like you're doing such a hard thing. Um, so that was kind of cool getting to run next to everyone doing the marathon. And it ended up being a really nice weekend. My boyfriend and I went to the movies. We went to dinner and it was just a really like cute, wholesome weekend. I have unpacked, which is good on my part because I either unpack immediately or I will not unpack for days. <laughs> Hello my friends, it is Connor from the future. Just a quick word from our sponsor and if you can't tell by my congested nose right now, I get a little bit sick. And I'm so sorry that you have to listen to my voice like this because it's not cute. I just wanted to give a big thank you to you Foods for sponsoring today's vlog. You guys know at this point, I, I sound like a broken record. I have been working with you Foods for multiple years at this point. I am obsessed. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but I'm definitely in my microwavable meal era, especially for lunch. It is a game changer. I do have the time to prepare my lunch and sometimes I do, but nine times out of 10. I cannot be bothered and that's okay. <laughs> One of our new faves is chicken tortellini. We're actually getting that in the next box that we're getting delivered, which is coming today as I'm filming this. But for dinner, I am making chicken penne, which is one of my all-time faves. I reckon it is my favorite of all time. It's just so good. If you've had the chicken penne, you know it is delicious. But the chicken alfredo, that's what I'm talking about, is chef's kiss. So yummy. I've also recently tried the fueled versions of you foods, which are basically the bigger meals so if i'm feeling particularly hungry or i just want a bigger meal on that particular day they are definitely a lot larger so if you're finding that you want larger meals just gonna blow my nose one second my boyfriend and i always finish off the you foods completely but you can also freeze them as well my code with you foods is cotter foods and that will get you a discount off of your orders come to think of it i need to actually pick my meals today because obviously each week you can select your meals the menu also changes by the way so you have different options each week which is really Nice. But I love working with you foods. I actually have a long term partnership with them, which is why you guys see them often on my channel, which is really, really awesome. And thank you guys as well so much for watching because without you guys, I would not have these opportunities. And I am always eternally grateful for you guys watching my videos. But with all that being said, let's get on with the video. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, guys. It's like three o'clock right now. I'm gonna pack for New Zealand. Also, I got a Koros. I swear I may be a little bit addicted to buying new running tech. I can't help it. It's unnecessary. I'm fully aware, fully aware. I have been umming and ahhing about getting a new running watch for a little while in the back of my mind because I wanna start wearing my watch all the time. I've done a lot of research about what people think about Koros. Koros is just another brand of running watch. It's kind of like, you know, Apple and Android, I guess. Also did end up getting a heart rate monitor strap to go with this as well as a little running pod. This is the Pace 3 and I literally ordered it yesterday and it came today. I love the look of it. I think it's just a lot more sleek. It suits me better than my big chunky Garmin. Who knows? I may hate this. The only annoying thing is that I'm essentially starting from scratch. My Garmin has got well over a year of running information from me whereas this is kind of starting from zero. Already I prefer the face of this so we will give her a go. But anyway, I ended up washing my hair today which washing my my hair takes a hot minute let me tell you since I do have a 34k run tomorrow I am most likely going to be out for the count afterwards <laughs> and I would rather do all my packing today or for the most part what I can do and then kind of not have to really worry about doing a whole heap of packing obviously you have to do things like toothbrush and skincare and whatnot but if I can get the majority out of the way today that would be good to know because I'm not going to have any time on Thursday because we're flying out at like 9am if I just check the temperature it's currently 11 degrees. Tomorrow is a low of three degrees. Hopefully the weather's not too bad, but we'll see. But I'm excited for the cold. I just need to take like a good puffer jacket. I've got one from Stax, but I do look like the Michelin man a little bit, so I'm not sure. Let's get this party started.
All right, we are trying out the new gear. The heart rate monitor strap with the Coros goes on your arm, which is different. I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like I will actually get used to it because it'll be nice not having something on my chest, which sometimes makes it hard to, not hard to breathe, but I don't know, as a girl, you've got already got a sports bra on, you've got a vest. It's just kind of another thing strapped there. And I'm like, I would love to not have that. And then probably the most exciting thing is this. It's called a Chorus Pod 2 and it straps onto your shoe or you can put it on your waistband. I don't know fully actually you know what? Why don't I look it up instead of me saying, I don't know what it does. Oh, then why are you wearing it, Connor? Reading off the Chorus website, it is supposed to give you more accurate and sensitive instant pace. It gives you improved measurement on treadmills and indoor tracks, improved GPS routes and data consistency in dense cities, more accurate effort management. <laughs> I went to say measurement and management at the same time. It gives you advanced running metrics, ambient temperature, ground time, left right balance, stride height, stride ratio, 25 hours of continuous running. Essentially, I don't know why my face is so red. Essentially, it's giving me more data about my running. Oh my god, go away with the video. The main thing was the pace for me. So a lot of watches apparently they have a delay when it comes to pace. So if you run, if you speed up, you know, you might only see the reflection of your pace 10 20 seconds later which is not great like you want to know what you're running particularly for interval workouts this is going to be handy so this transmit the accurate pace data from my foot because it's on my foot to my watch and then help me stay in the zone apparently i've heard too Coros can give you your effort pace so if you're running up a hill it'll give you the pace based on your effort because you might be slowing down if that makes sense you can also clip it onto your waist and that'll give you other metrics as well. I actually was going to do a tempo run on the treadmill. I did a kilometer and I was like, nah, don't want to do this. I'm just going to do an easy run um, because I've got 34k to do tomorrow. And part of me is like, Connor, why don't you just do it when you get back from New Zealand? But I just, like, I have to do it tomorrow. Uh, I'm probably going to do a run in New Zealand, which I'm not mad about. Like, that's going to be fun. And I was going to save my easy run for that, but I'm just going to do my easy run now because I just feel my legs felt very, very heavy on the treadmill. So I'm just going to try and shake them out and hopefully feel a little bit fresher for tomorrow. I need to get off my phone. Okay, let's go do this. I'm wearing very, very bright socks. I'm gonna listen to the new Gracie Abrams album. I don't, I think my cheeks are hot because I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> I feel like I ended the last clip of me talking in this exact spot. <laughs> my shirt is on backwards. It is the day before that we go to New Zealand. Honestly, in the grand scheme of things, the timing of this trip is not very good. It is the week that I'm supposed to do my longest run ever. And I have woken up very sore. I've got pretty intense doms, which is kind of random, but I guess it kind of makes sense because I did have more of a deload week last week and I did a gym session and a run yesterday. Oh my god. My pants, <laughs> oh my god, my pants and my top are on backwards. If that doesn't give you an indication of where my, my brain is at right now, oh my gosh. I tested out my Coros yesterday and I swear to god, the pacing was like, a minute and a half slower than normal. And so now I'm very, very confused as to what the heck I actually run because there's bound to be some differences when it comes to pacing from various watches. But it was literally telling me that I was running eight minute kilometers, which is slower than I started running at. So I'm like, it did kind of even out towards the end. Like I think my average pace for that run was like seven minutes, 16, which is kind of what an easy run I would expect for me to be. But I definitely felt like I was putting in more effort. So I'm very, very confused. I'm a bit kind of disheartened because I was feeling really good about my running and now I'm confused because I don't actually know what pacing I'm running and like why is there such a big difference in the pacing do I just need to give it another go like keep using it for it to even out or is my Garmin just way off but that doesn't make sense like why would the Garmin be so off well, it shouldn't be like uh, I really don't know um this is a first world problem but for me <laughs> my marathon is not that far away I'm like have I just been running less than I think and I don't know any insight would be greatly appreciated <laughs>
Good morning guys! Morning from Napier in New Zealand. It is, <laughs> it's pretty cold, I'm not gonna lie, oh my god. Um, it's just very windy and that's making it feel quite cold so I've got on multiple layers but the Airbnb that we're staying at is so cute and like quaint. It's very cottage vibes, the owner's house is literally like across the road and then they've made this little granny flat kind of thing but it overlooks wait let me like show you probably won't be able to hear me because it's very windy but it overlooks a farm if you can see you probably won't hear me at all but look and there's like a bath very very New Zealand vibes <laughs> And down there is this little like book. <laughs> it's like a little a little mini library and it's called the book exchange and it's so cute. I went down there just before just to have a look and it's so cute. I can imagine in the summertime this place would be such a vibe. Not that it isn't now, but obviously you, you can't really sit outside because it's absolutely but our travel day yesterday was nice and smooth. Everything went according to plan. I probably won't get a whole lot of footage while I'm here because I'm here to essentially meet my boyfriend's family because I've never met them because they're all in New Zealand. If you've heard of that invisible string theory, how my dad's from New Zealand, he's from New Zealand. In Napier now, I actually have family here, which is even crazier. Like out of everywhere in New Zealand, it just happens to be here as well. So yeah, devastating news. I forgot to bring my coffee. I thought I packed it because I'm thinking of when I packed it for Gold Coast. And then I was like, no, Connor, you never packed it for this. And I don't really sell before you speak here at Countdown, which is Woolworth. But, oh my god, wait, I need to show you what the Airbnb also gave. We've got some eggs, which these look like fresh eggs because there's literally a chicken hair on it, which is, that's a good sign. You know they're going to be good. Butter, jam, honey, and like muesli and homemade bread. Stop. I have said it. You know, my good number of Airbnbs. And this might take the cake for just like the personal touches. I don't know, it just feels super homely. Like the owners really care about their Airbnb. Oh, and we also hired a car. Glad we did. She's out there. We're definitely going to be doing a little bit of driving and needing to get around. Oh my gosh, you can see the water from here. In the distance. I don't know if you can see. Got a pretty good sleep as well because New Zealand at the moment is two hours ahead of Brisbane. So technically it's 7.51, so it's 5.51 a.m. back home. I need to blow my nose. Fingers freaking crossed. Tap on wood. Putting out the good vibes that I don't get sick. I cannot afford to get sick. We do have some, I think it's like French press coffee. If you're a coffee drinker and you don't have your coffee, you know. This is also my outfit. I've got on two hoodies. And my boyfriend's track pants because I'm washing mine. Turn that off. Happy Saturday. It is, I think, a little bit less cold today, or maybe I'm just getting used to it. So far, we have just basically been catching up with everyone here, and it's just been back to back to back, so lots of socializing, and it's just started raining again. <laughs> I tell you what though, it is definitely very, very cold. There are electric blankets in the bed and I have, oh my God, my hand is getting really cold holding this camera. I have been using that. I also at some point wanted to go for a run while we're here, but it is raining constantly. So I'm not sure if that'll happen, but it's just so picturesque here. Like 
oh how pretty there's also a little um let me flip this around i don't know if you can see there's like a little bird drink dispenser <laughs> thing i don't know what the liquid is it kind of looks like cordial oh let me just zoom out it kind of looks like cordial but it's almost gone it was pretty much full when we first got here oh my gosh my hands are going numb let me just head back on inside this morning i think we're gonna go to a cafe in town which will be nice half the clothes i packed definitely are not warm enough last night i had on my leggings underneath my jeans because that's what we're dealing with you know my hair but a couple things i'm a bit sick go figure you typically do get sick traveling on a plane i went to a really cold place i did take vitamin c like along the way i should have brought with me like armor force and i should start taking like the daily like uh immune one or whatever it is because as you can hear probably i am very very congested luckily i don't have any like body aches and i don't have a super intense cough i just kind of sound like this but I do not have time for this because I'm already behind on my run. Like I need to do my long run, but I obviously can't really do it like this. Praying it, this goes away within a couple days. I'm gonna go to the chemist, get some arm force, get some, uh, what's it called? Betadine throat gargle, even though I feel like that might be a preventative, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna skip everything I can do <laughs> because I really don't have time for this in terms of marathon training. And I feel like I was just sick, like only recently. But yeah, last night my nose was like fully congested. Would not, it felt like there was a log in my nose. This morning it's a lot better. I did have a shower. It's like 5.30 I think, something like that. Because I don't know what I'm gonna do if you know, this link is on for another week. I'm, it's seriously impacting my training now because I didn't run in New Zealand because it was raining all the time. I'm, I'm stressed and I feel like it's all my fault because I didn't organize it better. But on a better note, we are going to go get Charlie this morning. Elise is going to take her to her work because it's a lot closer and we're going to get Charlie. We were going to get her last night, but we decided to get her this morning just because we were really, really tired. I'm so excited. We're excited. Finally gonna have some coffee. Oh, I missed you. Did you miss us? Because we missed you. All right, let's do... Oh my God, I look terrible. Oh my God. Let me just give you a chemist warehouse haul. First off, we've got some, some vapor rub inhalers. Well, it's not really rub. Charlie hates the smell of these. Like, it must be just so strong for her. Like, she literally gets mad. Uh, almond milk just sat out. Good job. I also got some... Benadine throat gargle. I remember when Elise and I went to London, we tried to find this. It doesn't exist. I'm pretty sure this is like an Aussie thing or maybe Australia, New Zealand. Don't know, but this stuff is really good for sore throats. I also got a uh, sinus rinse. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about these, but I'm gonna give it a go. We'll see how we go with congestion. I'm currently boiling water because you have to use like a uh, sterile water before you shove this in one nostril and then i got two arm forces because there's one called daily protect which is more like a pro not a probiotic but you also take it for daily 
protection. But then I got this one, which is actually the one that relieves cold and flu symptoms, like when you're actually sick. This is the one I wanted, but the first chemist that I went to, she said that they only had this one and I felt really pressured and I just got it anyway. So I have both of them. <laughs> but it's good because I can kind of continue taking this after hopefully I get better because you could only take this for two weeks. Um, and then I actually just ordered some groceries because I don't want to leave the house again. But today I need to definitely have like a bit of a reset, try and fix my situation, but just unpack, get washing done, restock the fridge because we have no food. You can't have that. Anyway.